In this video, we're going to be talking about inequalities. There are lots of times where we care about things being equal to each other, but there are also cases where we care about things being unequal. Maybe we have two quantities and we want to understand when is one of them bigger than the other? When is one of them smaller than the other? When is one of them at least as big as the other? So for those cases, we want to be familiar with inequalities. So here's our essential understanding as formulated in the textbook. A linear inequality is an inequality in two variables whose graph is a region of the coordinate plane bounded by a line. So just to give you a sense of that, right? imagine we have a coordinate plane. Here's x. Here's y. And if we take any line we can think of that line, which goes on forever, as being the border of some region. We could think, oh, all the points above that line, right? That's kind of what we're just talking about here. We're talking about cases where the graph, the, all the points that make something true, are an entire zone of the plane bordered by a line. That line's called the boundary. And essentially, this boundary separates the plane into two half planes. There's this half plane above the line and another half plane below the line. And we'll see more detail on that in a moment. So generally speaking, we can solve a linear equality. When we, when we solve a linear equality, half of all the points are, are solutions. So if I give you something like 3x plus y is greater than 5, it's not like there are just a few points that make this true. There are infinitely many, and there are so many that we can't even put, say, they're all on a line or they're all on a curve. They will be an entire zone of the plane, an entire region. So the way we indicate a region, as I saw, as I showed you up here, is we do some sort of shading, right? We kind of color in the whole zone that we're talking about. And it's sort of implied that it keeps going. At some point, we get bored and stop sh shading. But theoretically, this region just keeps going forever in all directions except below that boundary line. So the way we would do this graph is first, we would graph the boundary line. And the way we do that is we think about the corresponding equation. And then we'll have two half planes. We can decide which one is relevant by testing a point or thinking about how the coordinates compare. I'll make that clearer in a moment. And then what we also want to do if we're being thorough is we want to decide if the boundary line should be included, sorry about the error there, included as, I don't know what I was thinking, included as part of the solution. If we want to indicate that the line is part of the answer, we draw a solid line. Otherwise, we draw a dotted line. So let's do some examples. And I'll just show you this first one. So I want to graph this inequality, all of the x, y that make this true. So what I would do is I would think about the corresponding equation, y equals 3x minus 1. And I'm just going to do a rough graph here. I'm not going to use a formal grid, but we'll get the basic gist of this. We know that that line has a y-intercept of negative 1 and a slope of 3. So here in orange is now, this orange stuff is where y is equal to 3x minus 1. We want where y is greater than 3x minus 1. So there are two ways you could do this. All oh, right, not greater, less than, sorry. Uh, less than. So the way that's easiest is to think, what does it mean? What does it mean to say that a y-coordinate is less than something? y measures vertical position. So if y is less than something, that means we're going down. It means below. 
So our solution would be everything below this line. Now this line is closer to vertical than it is to horizontal, but still it's clear which side is below. Right? If I pick any point and go straight down, it's in this region. So this whole region to the right of the line from one point of view, but below the line from another point of view is our solution. Any point we pick in this zone, for example, if I pick this point right here at four comma negative one, does that make it true that y is less than three x minus one? Y is negative one, three x minus one would be 11. And it's certainly true that negative one is less than 11. Now, if I'm being thorough, I want to think about this borderline. I want only when y is less than 3x minus 1, not when it's equal. So to make that really clear, what I could do is I could delete this original line and try to redraw it, and I'll do it in a matching color, as a dotted line. A dotted line is a way of indicating this is our theoretical boundary, but the points on that dotted line are not actually part of our solution. And the way I figured out which side I wanted was to think y less than means below. Right? So generally speaking, if you see all by all, if you have on one side of the equation, y is less than something, that means below. y is greater than something, that means above, or y coordinate is bigger. x is bigger than something, well making x bigger means to the right of something. x is smaller than something means to the left. So if you have it already set up where x or y is isolated, then you can do it that way. Or you can just test a point. So another way I could have done this, and I'll just redraw this somewhat quickly, I could have said, all right, here's my x and y plane. I'm not gonna do it in as much detail, but here's my x and y plane. And here's my boundary line. And what I could have done is I could have just picked a point not on that line. So for example, the point right here is at negative one five, for example. And I could ask, at that point, if x is negative 1 and y is 5, is this inequality true or false? So y is 5, 3x minus 1 would be negative 4, 5 greater than negative 4, that is not true. False. So what that means is that this point here is not in the solution set. But the solution set will either be this whole side of the line or that whole side of the line. If this point that we tested is not a solution, then our solution would be this entire other side like we got before. So if you feel like your intuition for up and down and left and right isn't great, or you have an inequality where things are presented in a really unusual way, like, oh, negative 3y plus 4x is less than or equal to 5, and you feel like you're, you have competing intuitions, you can always just test a point. Pick a point that's not on that line, and you can quickly decide, is that a solution or is it not? And then you know which side has the solutions. So give this a try. Try this one. Graph the inequality y is greater than or equal to 2x plus 3. Hit pause and try it for a moment. Okay, so what do we have here? Our y, so we'll graph the boundary line first. y equals 2x plus 3 has a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of 2. So over 1, up 2, over 1, up 2, like that. Connect all this into a line. If you want to, if you want to be really thorough, you can make it keep going to cover the whole grid. I wouldn't require that. This grid's kind of big. 
And now which side do we want? Well, we can just pick something to test, right? Let's pick this point right here, 5, 5. If x is 5 and y is 5, is that inequality true? Is it true that y is greater than or equal to 2x plus 3? y is 5, 2x plus 3 would be 13, and 5 greater than or equal to 13, not true. So no. This point here is not part of the solution, so it's the other side. All of this stuff. is our solution set. Every point over here makes the inequality true. And also, this is greater than or equal, so we do want to include this line. What you might want to do so things are more obvious is draw the line in the same color as your shading. I intentionally wanted them to look different at the beginning, but now we can make it really clear. Where are all the points that make this true? It's this whole zone but also if we're literally on this line, that's also a solution. Now, this is not just an abstract exercise. Sometimes visualizing the solution to an inequality can help us understand a range of combinations. Right? Sometimes we're not looking for one specific solution. We want to understand what are all of the different possibilities. So here's an example that I'll show you. At a carnival, this is an example from the book, the prices maybe are a little out of date. We have that the big rides at the, carnival, at, the, at the carnival cost five tickets and the small rides cost three tickets and each ticket is 75 cents. So use the graph of an inequality to display all possible combinations of big and small rides if you have $15 to spend on tickets. So here's what we can do. We can introduce some variables. We can say x is the number of big rides and y is the number of small rides. So, and let's convert everything to cents. So this right here is 600, not 600 cents, sorry. Like, I'm sorry, let's just convert everything to tickets. I take that back. This is 60 tickets. So let's think about the ticket cost. If each big ride is X, if we, I'm sorry, if each big ride costs five tickets, but there are X of them, our ticket cost would be five X. If you ride two of them, that's 10 tickets. If you ride five of them, that's 25 tickets. If you ride 10 of them, that's 50 tickets. So the cost to ride X big rides is five times X. And similarly, the cost to ride Y small rides would be three times Y. So what we could think here is that our total ticket cost, the total tickets that we use would be 5x plus 3y. And that is less than or equal to 60, right? Maybe we're not going to spend, use all 60 tickets, right? Depending upon an awkward combination, maybe you have like one ticket left over and you only use 59. That's certainly possible. But certainly it's less than or equal to 60. So let's draw a graph to kind of make sense of this. And I'm not going to do this in a lot of detail. I just want you to get the gist of this. So our boundary line is 5x plus 3y equals 60. And it might be easiest to just figure out where the intercepts are. So we'll just notice if x is equal to 0, you can quickly check that y is equal to 20. So let's say that's here. So I'm just going to say roughly 10, 15, 5, 5, 10, 15, like so. And we'll also notice if y is equal to 0, you can quickly check that x is equal to 20.
So this here in green is our boundary line. Now, here, since we're talking about the number of rides you ride, negatives don't really make sense. So all that we care about takes place just in the first quadrant, right? Sometimes when we're analyzing a real world situation, negatives don't make any sense to us. But we want the stuff that would be kind of inside this, right? Hopefully intuitively you realize we can't move in this direction. That would just mean more and more rides, right? We're limited. So this zone here represents the different possibilities. And sort of within this is a grid. Only whole numbers make sense. But, you know, for example, there would be a point right around here, which would be 6, 8. That's definitely inside the, the, that zone. So that's saying, yes, it's possible to ride 6 big rides and 8 small rides with your 60 tickets. So this is just a nice little visualization tool to, to, realize, to, to kind of make sense of all of the different possibilities. And here the possibilities are combinations of numbers. All right, let me show you one more thing from this section. So everything we saw in the previous examples has a line as its boundary, but the same principles can be used to inequalities involving expressions that are not linear. We can still think about an equation giving us a boundary, and we can still shade a portion of the plane. So for example, suppose I wanted to graph y is less than absolute value of x minus 3 plus 1. So again, we can think about our boundary. Our boundary would be where y is equal to the absolute value of 3x, x minus 3 plus 1. And this is like our usual absolute value graph, but it's been shifted three units to the right because we're subtracting three inside the absolute values and one unit up. So the vertex would be at 3 comma 1, but otherwise it would be like our absolute value graph with the slope of 1. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to find the stuff where y is less than that. So y being less means below. So our region of solutions, it's not literally a half plane anymore because we have a more complicated boundary, but it's everything that we would describe as being below that v. So all of this stuff, right, it goes on forever. We just want to shade enough to indicate what the pattern is. and it doesn't actually include the boundary. So depending upon how you're drawing, if you're doing this in pencil, it can be, you can try erasing part of the line. On notability, you can get away with just deleting this and then try to redraw it as a dotted line. Same over here. So all the stuff in green, which does not literally include that V shape, would be solutions, right? And we can just check, right? To make sure we, we're not crazy here. Let's pick a point right here. Here is the point where X is two and Y is negative two. So is it true that Y is less than the absolute value of X minus three plus one? Y would be negative two, absolute value of X, Minus 3 would be the absolute value of 2 minus 3. Absolute value of 2 minus 3 is the absolute value of negative 1, which is 1, which is 1 plus 1. So we're saying negative 2 is less than 2, and that's certainly true. So this point is one of infinitely many points in this region that make that inequality true. All right, that is it for this section.